Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Whatever you need, he will. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Yes, he will. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Glory to God. Get it in your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever your situation is. Know that God is able to do it. Know that he's able to do it. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Won't you just join hands with your neighbor? And just speak words of encouragement to them. Speak words of life to them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for my neighbor, God. Those unspoken needs, God, that they have before you, Lord. God, we lift it up to you. Hallelujah. God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, God. But it's according to the power that already works within us. Now, God, we tap into the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. God, we trust you. We trust your ability. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We speak life into the life of my neighbor. We speak hope. We speak deliverance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's release those hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Know that he's going to do it. That he's going to do. Just that he's going to give you the strength to go through. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Give honor to our bishop on this morning. Our founder pastors in their absence we respect and reverence them in Jesus name we thank God for all our presbytery member board members we bless you in the name of the Lord our ministers we thank God for you and our deacons we bless you in the name of the Lord God again he's so good hallelujah he is so good hallelujah yeah hey, yes and he's faithful. Woo. I caught that. <laughs> yes, he is. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I also wanted just to uh, mention uh, to be in prayer, continue to be in prayer for uh, Minister Lawana and LaDonna and the passing of their cousin on um, in the funeral celebration that occurred on this past Friday. Continue to keep them lifted and covered in prayer as well. And also um, uh, Sister Connie, um, Lynette Tuffy, and also Elder Benita in the passing of their aunt. And um, continue to support and pray for them during this time of bereavement in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to go to quickly to the word of God in Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Yes, and continue to pray for Sister LaVon as well, the passing of her sister. In 
to this day. Continue to cover her, keep her lifted, and release strength. We map it, we release strength to you even now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 46. And one verse, and it says from the NIV, God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. The King James put it, put it, puts it like this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. That's right, he's right there. A very present help in trouble. Wherever you are, God is there. I just want to declare in this place on the day that you can make it to the end. You can make it to the end. You can make it to the end. I was greatly disturbed. I'm still getting um, feedback. Um, greatly disturbed and um, a little unnerved on this past Friday as I was working, but I had a chance to listen to the news report of the events that occurred in uh, France on this past Friday. And the, the acts, the, the news and the acts of ter terrorism, uh, and it just began to come back home that, you know, we will continue to be affected by acts of terrorism. And I begin to think about uh, our occurrences, uh, even, on our, even in our own homeland uh, regarding 9-11, uh, the events of 9-11 that still linger till this day. My mind began to run and started to race a little bit. And I got a little nervous. And I said, oh God, what's going on? I got a little, a little nervous. And um, God's still voice, it spoke to me and reminded me that these things have to happen. And I began to pray for those who were immediately impacted and began to pray and just intercede again for our nation, our state, state and our nation, the wisdom for our president. That God would give him direction because he is under attack. Yes. I say that publicly. He, yes, he is under attack. Yes. And um, when he tries to do something right, they call it wrong. That's right. That's right. But he is trying to lead our nation the best way that he can yes. with the support that he has. Yes. Might be limited, but he's, he's doing what he can. Yes. But I, I begin to pray that God will continue to cover us yes. as a people. Yes. That God would continue to cover us as a nation. I was so comforted by the words of our text today that God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. This text, it, it lets us know that we don't have to fear because we have divine protection from the almighty God. He can and will protect us from all and any calamities that may be occurring around us. This psalm, it gives us the confidence to know that no matter what you go through in life, that he is with us and he's able to keep us. There has to be an, in, an, an inner knowing and an inner confidence that God will protect us that God will be our refuge in the time of trouble. 
when we face difficulties in life, we, we have to have the assurance that God will be what we need him to be in our time of need. The, the, the psalmist here, he encourages us to recognize that God is with us even in the worst of times. The Psalms, it, it, des it describes an attribute that is not attributed or given to any other person or any other power. So that's for you atheists who might be looking. That, that, that God is. And God is real. I have to put my, my, my theological and my philosophical hat on this morning just a little bit. There, 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 there are those who, who claim and declare that there is no God. But I want to declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that rests within me, and I believe I have more than one witness, that God is. Now, God is. Hallelujah. Now, shout on that. Hallelujah. This psalm, it, it encourages us, us to know and to realize that we have a safe place. We have a safe place that we can go to even when we don't understand. All that's going around us. We have a safe place through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The first idea that I want to lift up from this uh, passage is that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. One of my favorite translations, the Message Bible, says it like this. It says, God is a safe place. But it goes on to say, God is a safe place to hide. And it also says that he's ready to help when we need him. God Almighty. God is a safe place. He's a safe place to hide. And he's ready. He's at attention. We have his attention. And He's ready to help us in our time of need. The place of refuge that is being referenced in our text, it is one of safety. It is one of protection from our enemies. It reminds us that we must take comfort and know and, know and trust the fact that God is with us at all times. He's, at us, he's with us when the, in the good times, the, the bad times, the, the lean times, the threatening times, the times we don't understand. He's there. He's with us. There, will, there are so many times and there will be times in our lives when the enemy comes to threaten our very core. He comes to threaten our health. He comes to threaten our families. But we have to have the assurance that we have a safe place. That we have a place of safety where we can go. And it is through God who protects us from the enemy. God will protect us in our times of need. God is there to hold us up in the time of need. This, this psalm it's one that provides insight, a look into the life of even David. I don't believe he wrote this particular psalm, but it, give, it gives us insight into even the life. I'm just using him as a character witness because I'm not too sure if he wrote this. But, but I'm just using him as a character witness. Amen? Amen. That, that even as David uh, uh, revealed himself through the psalms, he... Um, he, 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 he had uh, a mindset, and he had insight that, that, that God, it was God, who gave him the victory through every challenge in his life. Now, he didn't do everything right. That's right. 
David was a little jacked up. And I believe some of us can identify with his jacked upness. That, 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 that even though and even through his jacked upness, that he could depend on God, that he knew that God would be his refuge, that God would be his protection in his time of trouble. Despite what it looked like, David was one who relied on the strength of God, and he knew where his help came from. He knew that God would be there with him to help him during his times of battle. And you know, you have to have confidence in God that he will keep you. You have to have an inner confidence that despite whatever I'm going through in life, that God is going to keep me. You might not understand everything. You might not embrace everything. But know that God is going to keep you if you keep your mind. If you keep your mind stayed on him, <laughs> hallelujah, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Despite the chaos that you're going through. And some of us live some chaotic lives. Some of us have, we have some, 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 some stuff that we can, we can write a book on. And I encourage many of y'all to write some memoirs and some books. You have to tell somebody because your, your test results into a testimony. Yes, yes, your, your, your tests result into a testimony to those who don't quite know God in the way that you might know him. So tell your story, share your faith. That's a side note, share it. But despite what you're going through, God is able, he's able to do. The, the psalmist, he declared that God is my refuge. God is my strength. And you have to be confident and have the assurance that you can rely on God in your time of need. Despite whatever you're going through, God will be your refuge. The Living Bible, it translates this particular psalm as God is our refuge and strength. But the Living Bible says a tested help. In times of trouble, you can, t you can try God because you know what? He's been proven. He's been proven. He's been tested throughout time that he is able to do. He is a present help. He is a refuge. He is strength when you need. He's been tested. He's been proven. That's what tested me. He's been proven to be. And do I have any witnesses that, that God will? And God is. And God has been a refuge in your time of need. This lets me know that even in the tough spots, that we have a God who's ready. He's willing and able to keep us, to hold us up, and to keep us safe. He'll keep our minds. He'll lift us up above our circumstances. He will be a place of refuge. Proverbs 18 and 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous, they run to it, and they are safe. So that wins you, means when you get in trouble that you can call on the name of the Lord because he is a strong tower. He is the one who can lift you up. He is the one who will carry you through. When you're in trouble, he'll lift you up. Let me slow down a little bit. But he is. Hallelujah. When you become fearful of what you're going through, run to God. Don't run to the bottle. Don't run to weed. Don't run to the black and mild. I'm closing my eyes because I don't want to see no faces. But run to God because he is the source of your strength. He's able to carry you through. He's able to lift you up. He's able to be your refuge. Can I get a witness? Can I get one witness that he's able? He's able. 
in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you get in trouble, don't get anxious about the situation, but run to God. He has your answer to your question. Run to God when you're in trouble. Seek refuge in his presence. Don't isolate yourself. Don't stay away from church. But run to God. Run to the sanctuary. Run to a safe place. Because there's safety in the sanctuary. There's peace in the sanctuary. There's rest on your soul. There's rest your mind, whatever you're going through, there's refuge, there's safety in the sanctuary, hallelujah, hallelujah, there's healing in his presence, there's deliverance in his presence, there's breakthrough in his presence, but if you just take refuge in him, that's what you got to do. You got to make up your mind that I'm going to have, and I'm going to have refuge through the one who can give it. The one who has all power. Hallelujah. And you got to come to a place of knowing. <laughs> you got to come to a place in your own experience that God will be your refuge. The second idea that I want to lift up is that we have to acknowledge God's presence. We have to acknowledge God's presence because there is safety in his presence. When you acknowledge God's presence, you will find yourself in a place of worship. When you begin to make steps, in your life and you are in a desperate place you are in the middle of chaos when you find yourself in a place of worship that's when God will speak to you that's when God will give you the answers to whatever you're going through now I'll say this as a side note sometimes God doesn't give an immediate answer. Now, that's not the time to check out on God. He's trying to teach us to worship. He's trying to teach us to stay in a place of refuge. He's trying to teach us to be in a place of safety. And that's in his presence. So, don't find yourself isolated, away from God. But worship, it will lead you, and, and it will keep you focused. It will keep you in a place, in a mindset where you basically have blinders on. And it keeps you focused on the right thing. That whatever you are doing in my life, God, I'm going to accept it right now. I might not understand all that's going on. There might be chaos. There might be craziness going on me around me. But, God, I trust you that you're my refuge. God, you're my safety. God, you're keeping my mind. And even if your mind is not kept at that particular moment, you got to speak it. You got to say stuff to yourself while you're in the middle of what you're going through. You got to speak songs, spiritual songs, spiritual songs to yourself. You got to encourage yourself that, God, I'm in this place. And, God, I might not understand all that I'm going through. But, God, I know there's safety in your presence. God, he will keep us when we focus our attention on him. Worship, it will allow you to have a better attitude. Some of us need an attitude adjustment. <laughs> If some people around you are a little tippy and a little nippy, they, ain't ha they haven't worshipped. <laughs> you might be the one. <laughs> Worship. 
get your attitude together. If, you, if you're a little short with people, go and worship. Get in God's presence. Stop getting on people's nerves and get yourself together. Stop getting on your own nerves. And you know, we do get on our own nerves sometimes. If the truth be told, let's be real. We'd be wondering why we're acting like that. Because we, we have not worshiped. Worship. It produces the right attitude. It produces a better attitude. When we're dealing with ourselves, but also when we're dealing with others. Hallelujah. Worship when you need answers to your questions. Worship the one who has the answers. Worship, it will allow you to get rid of the distractions in your life. Worship, it will allow you to see the bigger picture of what you're going through. You have to realize that God desires us to be close to him. And we must find a way to get into his presence. We have to sometimes get up early. Sometimes we have to stay up late when it gets quiet. And I love at nighttime in my house. Because it gets real quiet. <laughs> it gets real, I mean, it gets real quiet. And that's when God speaks to me the most. Sometimes my wife, she probably wonders, what in, the, what in the devil in the world is he doing downstairs? I'm in the safety of his presence. I'm meditating on his word. I'm speaking to myself. I'm saying, Myron, you might not understand everything that you're going through right now. But you know what, Myron? You can make it through this. Myron, you can make it to the end. Myron, you can make it to the, through the end of this. And I want to say to you, you can make it to the end of whatever you're going through. If you just stay in a place of refuge. Stay in a place of worship. God will. He will meet you. In that place of worship, God wants us to find a way to be and stay in his presence. God desires that we be perpetual, perpetual worshipers. Perpetual. That means continuously, continuously, all the time. <laughs> you can be in your car. God, I bless you. God, I love you. You can be in the class, students. You can be in class in the middle of your lesson. God, I bless you. God, I thank you for protecting my life. God, I thank you for giving me health. God, I thank you for uh, uh, allowing my parents to keep a roof over my heads. God, I thank you for putting a little money in my pocket. God, I thank you for my part-time job. God, I thank you for my full-time job. God, I thank you. That's a perpetual worship. Worshiper. He wants us to be a perpetual worshiper. We got to stay in his presence. And as I bring it to a close, the third idea that we must embrace in this text is we cannot be moved by what we see. We cannot be moved by what we see. The psalmist, he declares in our text, he says, therefore, and that's what it's there for. That means to look at it, observe. We will not fear. Though the earth give way and mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar, and foam, and the mountains quake, and they're surging. But he goes on to add Selah at the end of that clause. That means to think about it, but it also means to lift up to. And I got encouraged when I looked at this particular verse, and it reminded me that despite whatever we see, with our natural eyes, that God is still in control. 
He's still in control, even in France. He's in control, even in the United States. He's in control, even in Forestville, Maryland. He's in control in your life. God is there just when it seems like he's not. But he is a very present help in the time of trouble. The psalmist, he reminds us to fear, not fear, even when we have been shaken. And we will be shaken in our lives. But he encourages us to know that even though the earth is moving, everything seems chaotic, that God is our refuge, God is our safety, God is our hope, and we have to learn how to trust him wherever we are in our lives. So you, your faith, propel you to a place of safety, a place of refuge, because God is right in the middle of it. He's there when you need him the most. He's there to lift you up higher. He's there to give you peace in your mind. He'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. So whatever you're going through, I want to declare this house on this morning that God will keep you and allow you to get to the end of whatever you're going through. He is my refuge. He is my safety. Whatever you need, he will be. Yes, yes, he'll give you the might and the strength to go through whatever you're going through. He'll give you strength and lessen up your stress. Some of us are going through stressful situations, but God is saying that I am your refuge. I am your safety. I am what you need me to be. If you just come closer, come closer, because I'm your refuge. I'm your safety. If you just come to me, get in a place of worship. I will draw near to you. Whatever you need, God will. He'll be that to you. Yes, he will. He will establish you in your going in and your going out. He will help you when you feel like you're down to your lowest point. He'll lift you. He'll lift you higher, higher, higher. He'll lift you to a place of safety. He'll lift you to a place of refuge. But you got to draw near to him. Get in his face. Get in his presence. Because he is your refuge. He's your place of safety. Hallelujah. He'll bring you out. 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 Yes, he will. I'm encouraging myself. Even as I stand right here. He will. He will. He will. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. I know he will bring me out. I know he will give me the strength to go through. Whatever I'm going through, he'll give you the power, 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 power to go through. He'll give you the wisdom to make the right decision. He'll give you the wisdom to walk right. He'll give you the wisdom to talk right. So whatever you need, he'll be. Whatever you need, he'll be. He'll be your refuge in your time of storms. Yes, he will. Ask me how. And I tried him. 
and he's been proven. <laughs> he's been proven. All you need is one experience. <laughs> all you need is one experience. That's all you need. And I believe I got a house full of people that have tried him at least once. And I got a couple of witnesses that know that God will be your refuge in the time of storms. So we don't have to get nervous about what's going on around us. We don't have to get uneasy. We might be moved, but don't be shaken. Hallelujah. Everybody stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help. Very present help. He's right there with you. Sometimes we take ourselves through and we try to bear up the load of our walk by ourselves. We try to hold and contain the weight and the weights that we're going through. But God is saying, I am your refuge. I am your strength. I can't hit this home enough. I want us to get this word. Whatever you're going through in your life, he is your refuge. He is your strength. That means he is a sure foundation. He is a sh not a shaky foundation. He's a sure foundation. He's a solid foundation. And we have to have the assurance that God is our refuge. And he will be our refuge. He'll be our safety. And he will allow us to make it to the end. Whatever your experience is in life, he will allow you to make it to the end of it. Realize that it's just a season that you're going through. It's just a season. We all go through seasons in life. We go through experiences. But know that the, at the end of the season, there will be victory. There will be more glory in your life after you go through. Because he's going to allow you to make it to the end. Because he is our Very present help. In the time of trouble. Of trouble. Yes, he is. If you're here today and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the first thing I invite you to come. Romans 8 says, if you could confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that you will be saved. If you're not saved and you've never made it a profession and a confession of your faith, that's the first appeal. If you're here today and you've been uh, without a church home, this is a safe place. It's a place of refuge. We're not a perfect people, but we are people in process. And we will be here as a church family together to help you to go through and to grow together spiritually in the things of God. If you're here and you need someone to agree with you as touching in the name of Jesus, you might need a word of encouragement. I invite you to come. Hallelujah. Because God is our refuge. God is God is our strength.